Hello Amy394. So we're going to start working on building interface elements and I want us to build some custom interface elements so we have a really strong understanding of how those elements are actually working. And I think one of the best ways that we can actually start to really dive in and have a really solid understanding of what that means is to start building these things ourselves. So we're going to start with just the regular interface elements that we uh, have here in our comps and our components and we're going to modify those to be exactly the kinds of things that we want. So we're going to start with a button. And we're going to take a moment to really kind of understand what's going on here inside of this button. So when we look at this button, um, first of all we know that it's it's similar to a container, right? If we have a container drop down here we can see that uh, we have almost all of the same attributes between these two. One of the things that's different between the two of these components is this button page. The button possesses this page, a container does not. And that's important because it has a few different options for us in terms of how we actually work with it, right? Uh, what its kind of button type is. So we're going to take advantage of that and then we're going to take a look inside of our button and see what's happening um, to understand why it works because we'll notice that when we mouse over it it changes color and we click it on it changes color and it has a few properties that are really handy and interesting but it's important for us to really understand what's going on so let's take a closer look so here inside of our button we can see that we've got a panel chop right so this is giving me some panel information and if I pull up my button I can see that this is uh, got a rollover value, right? So I know when my mouse is rolled over this thing. I also know its state, so it's on state and it's off state. And then I've got this select, uh, which is a kind of is letting me know when I'm clicking on it and clicking off of it, right? All right, so that's important because it allows us to do uh, an interesting little kind of bit of math here. So we're using this expression chop over here, and our expression is looking at uh, the input value plus two times me dot inputs and what that's allowing us to do over here is to count from uh, where's our little button where'd it go from zero to three based on uh, what's going on here that's really handy for us because what that's going to uh, do is that here in our uh, background um, texture or background top which is really just a text top if we take a look here we can see that we examine our panel the background top is set to this thing called BG this guy right here BG and BG we can see is actually a text top excellent that's good to know so what's happening is that we've got some very fancy expressions going on. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that we can understand what's happening. So our text top is looking for some information from a couple of different places. The first thing it's doing is it's pulling the values that populate it from our operator called color from this table. So we're extracting some information about this table based on what's going on in this operator called I this guy and what this state value is. So what's going on if we take a close look at this is we can see that in our current state right so when we're at state 0 we're looking at um, we're looking at this guy right so I want state 0 plus 1 so that means that the thing in this section of our row if we were to look at it as a table and let's go ahead and and do that and I want ch -ch 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 -ch. what uh, one two three four five I want five rows and I just want one column for right now okay so we're looking over here we want to make an integer out of the operator i, this guy, and the thing called state, great, and we want to add one to that. So in this current configuration, right, that's going to mean that that number, let's go ahead and uh, make this a floating copy. Whew, 
Much better. There we go. Thank goodness. Okay. In our current situation, that means that our font color, or the, the kind of address that we're looking for, right, is going to be 0, right? And then I'm looking at the column called font. And if we looked over, looked over here, the column font is in the 1 position. So that's 1, right? Which means if we were to rewrite this expression for just one second, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to drop down a text stat. I want to hold on to that because I don't want to lose it just yet. Oops, close that. It's a useful little expression. If I was to take this guy out and instead sub in 0, comma 1, Great, I would get an error. Why am I getting an error? Two, 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 two. Oh, right, one. Because we added one to this, excuse me, pardon me, right? That's part of what this expression is telling me to do, is find this thing called i. Right, it's at zero right now, and then I want to add one to it. So that's what I'm doing, one, one. So in this off position, I'm looking over here for the row and column in this thing that's at one, one row, and then one column. OK. Whew. Excellent. And I'm reusing that same value for the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. OK. So then what happens if I click this button to the on position. If I'm in the on position here, right, then I have a 1, that's what's populating this, and what I'm doing is I'm looking for that thing called i and the thing called state, all right, 1, I want to add 1 to it, so it's going to be 2, so that would mean that in the on position, what I'm looking for is an address in my row and columns in my table that's at 2, 1, right? So I want the second row and I want the first column, this guy. If I was to come in here and change that to 2, 1, great. Then my numbers match, right? So these are, all three of these are the same, same expression, which is keeping it the same uh, kind of shade of white for us. Okay, when I hover over the top of this thing, something else happens. All right, this puts us in state 3. Okay, so if we look back at this expression, that means that it's going to be 3. You know the drill. Plus 1 is 4, which means my address is, you guessed it, 4, comma 1, right? And that's when we roll over this thing, and it's already on. And then there's a different value if we roll over this thing, and we can go ahead and change that. Let's change that so we can see that it's in fact right. So far, so good. All right, and then this rollover, while it's off, that puts us in state two. And state two, right, following the pattern, is going to have an address in our rows and columns of three, one. And if I change this to three, one, I should, lo and behold, see a value that matches. Okay, so why go through all that rigmarole to tell you about what's happening inside of this thing? Well, that fancy expression, let's go ahead and put it back, is doing a really lovely operation for us. Because what it's doing is it's paying attention to the state of the button. Like, is it on? Is it off? Is my mouse rolled over it or rolled off it? And then based on what's happening in regards to my mouse and its position to this button, and whether the button is toggled on or off, it's then pulling different values from this table to populate these fields for color, background color, border. All of that information is being grabbed right here from this uh, single table dat. So let's go ahead and exploit that. Um, let's take advantage of this thing that already exists. So I'm going to make it viewer active. I'm going to right click on it. 
I'm going to go ahead and add a column after. I'm going to call it text. Now when my button's off, I want it to say off. When the button's on, I want it to say on. Rollover is when the button's off, right? So I'm in the off position and I'm about to be turned into the on position. So I'm going to call this standby on. And for the rollover while it's on, I'm going to make sure this is standby off. Okay, so now what? Now I'm going to go ahead and take this expression. I'm going to borrow it, do a little copy. We're going to come over here to our uh, text field, right? Because I could put any kind of text I wanted in here. We've practiced that before. But this time I want to use an expression to do that. Now instead of pulling from the column called font, I want to pull from the column called text. So let's go ahead and change this text. Great. All right, so now I can control what this button says based on what its state is. Now we'll see that this standby on and standby off, that's, uh, that's a bit trash, right? Let's go ahead and turn on word wrap. Okay, that's a little bit better. I like that a little bit more. We might want to come out here and then take this button and let's make it a little bit wider. Let's make it like 60 wide. And what is that? Mm, we might even go up to like 80. Why not? Let's be let's be brave. Yeah, that's cool. And let's make it a little less tall. Maybe a little more like 40. Yoink. Cool. All right. Now, similarly, maybe we want to leave it just at this square shape. And I don't really care about this standby on, standby off business, right? So in that case, I can just go ahead and populate these fields uh, with this same text that we're already using. Because really what I care about is when it's in the on position and the off position. So the off position means that right, it's not toggled on. On position is on. Okay, cool. All right, so we've gone ahead and changed that. And now we can actually alter what our text is just by editing this table. So we could imagine, for example, uh, that we might have something like this. This probably looks familiar, right? If we had a null, we connected this to our null. And let's have a movie file in. And let's make this one uh, a different photo, this weird thing here. And let's use a switch. We're going to connect both of these things to the switch. I want to toggle between these two things uh, based on my switch. So we'll go ahead and make this viewer active. We're going to grab this. We'll drop it on index. We'll use a relative chop reference. That's a fast way to write the reference for us so we don't actually have to do it ourselves. Which I haven't told you about because I wanted you to be in the habit of practicing it. But now we can start to just work a little bit faster. Okay, so now I can switch between the banana and the color bars. Great. Well, what if I wanted my button to tell me which one of those I was uh, getting ready to do? So let's go ahead and change this. So in the off position, I'm the banana. Banana. In the on position, I'm color bars. We can go ahead and reuse these. And we'll see that mm, we probably need to make this a little bit wider. Let's go back up to 80. There. All right, so now what I've got is now I have a button that has a name that corresponds to what's happening over here. Right, like you can begin to see where we're going with this because you know the next assignment that we're going to do, or the next big project that we're going to do, is building an interface to control part of our network that we made. Okay, so that's one thing that we're going to work on, right? I want us to have um, a button that's already set up that we can put names inside of. Because once we do that once, then we can, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these guys and this. Let's make it 50-50 again. Once I've done that one time, it's not hard to take this and make a bunch of those buttons. And then all I have to do is edit the values inside of this single text stat, and I can customize my buttons really quickly. All right. So let's go ahead and get rid of those. So that's making a button.